Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. In today's video, we're gonna be installing a budget combi boiler conversion. Okay, so this is the heat only boiler we're gonna be removing today. Now, originally when I came to look at this job, I actually quoted just to provide an unvented hot water cylinder as the main reason we're replacing this today is because they want mains pressured hot and cold water. Now, the reason we're gone for the combi boiler and not the unvented cylinder is just there wasn't enough room in the current vented hot water cylinders location to kind of house everything as the cupboard's not deep enough um etc and it would have just been a lot of hassle replacing all the controls and everything so rather than doing that we are going to be removing this boiler removing a cylinder which is side by side with this boiler on the other side of the wall and sticking in a glow worm comfort combi boiler now as you can see the pipe work layout and everything should be quite simple the cylinders side by side next door we've already got the flow and return etc gas is already up here um i believe we might just have to update the condens looking at it it looks like it just goes through in overflow size but other than that it should be fairly straightforward now the customer has opted to go for the uh glow worm combi bo boiler version of this boiler so they're obviously familiar with it. They like the Glow Worm brand, so we're gonna stick with that. As well as that, we're gonna reuse the Hive heating controls. So ultimately, this should be a fairly straightforward combi boiler conversion. Right, we're on the other side of the wall now where that gas boiler is, and this is the hot water cylinder they currently have in operation now. As you can see, this thing is absolutely tiny. Now, as I previously said, I did come to quote to put an unvented cylinder in here, but there just isn't enough room. I'm not sure if that's picking up on the camera, but there's hardly any depth at all. So the client would have had to have uh, rebuilt the cupboard, etc. So although that gas boiler is fairly new and it is a bit, strange to kind of advise a customer to take out you know a fairly new boiler it kind of made sense really given that when i was putting the quotations together the glow worm combi boiler is so reasonably priced it kind of makes sense just to take all this out and just update it to a combi boiler conversion so that's what we're going to be doing today so as you can see the pipe work in here is a little bit of a mess um but most of it will be coming out so what we're going to do is get this all drained down start cutting all this away and then i will go through all the uh pipe work uh, relocations we're going to be doing to get this spoiler switched over to a combi okay so before i start decommissioning the boiler i'm just doing a drop test on the current gas supply so the good news is we've got 22 mil going all the way up to the boiler or where the air and cupboard is anyway so that'll be absolutely fine we're putting a 28 kilowatt in and it is pretty much directly above this so yeah just make sure this is all good okay so i've just got the meter cap done the drop test everything's absolutely fine now i just need to get the cold water main off now as you can see they've got one of these shore stops which makes it really convenient I'll just push that trigger down and uh get this whole system drained down <laughs> Okay, so boiler is now off, and for those of you who are wondering if you can resell secondhand gas boilers, the answer is, in short, yes you can. When you reinstate a new gas boiler, you still need to notify it, so you still obviously need to have a gas safe registered engineer to install the boiler for you. Make sure they notify the installation, but there's no reason why you couldn't reinstate this gas boiler. Like I say, it's, uh, it's only a couple of years old, doesn't look like there's anything wrong with it. We're going to try and salvage the flue for um need to make sure we keep all the little accessories and stuff but yeah this boiler be good to go in another property okay so here she is the glow worm compact 28c combi boiler now this was extremely light taking it up the stairs i must admit it's probably the lightest combi boiler i've ever lifted so we've removed the boiler totally from the wall now the customer did ask if we could raise it back up to the old boilers previous location but I've just checked outside and it's too close to the eave so I think that's probably why they moved it down initially in the first place so I'll just make sure the customer is happy with us to locate it where the existing boiler was so anyway let's get this open and see what we've got inside so push that over there it says don't use a knife I guess that's because the boiler base is on the other side of that so let me just cut them ones that's very tempting to me to 
Oh, we well, don't need enough. Maybe that's what they need. Right. <laughs> okay, so we've got obviously boiler manuals, accessories. Now, I don't believe you get a filling loop kit with this boiler. Now, that's pretty standard with most budget boilers. That's just something you have to take into consideration. So, I've just purchased a standard filling loop. Now, I haven't actually fitted one of these combi boilers before, but I believe this is quite an updated design down here on the display. So, although this is the Glowworm Ultimate, I believe this is the newest Glowworm that's out at the moment. So, yeah, it looks pretty nice. Nice, simple, nice and plain. So, yeah, let's get it unboxed, get it on the wall and take a look inside. Okay, the template is on the wall, and as you can see, I've just pinned it into position for now. So, in all honesty, I wouldn't normally use a template like this, but just to show you how you can get it as accurate as possible. So, I've cut out that circle which indicated which flue I was using, and I'm just literally putting it straight over the hole. So, we know the boiler is going to be located in the correct location. And then, once I've got the template level, I've just pinned it into location, and I can just check that with this level here along that sort of dotted line. Now, this boiler, I guess because it's a budget boiler and it's just a cut cost a bracket built onto the back. Now, I don't think necessarily that's a bad idea. I think it's actually pretty good. So all I need to do is just put two screws in on the far left and far right and get it hung and level and then I can secure it while it's in position with the other hole. So yeah, let's get this hung. Okay, so I've now got the flue all nice and secure. Now, when you're installing a valent or glowworm flue, it is important not only to secure it here on the bracket, but also to add these two self-tapping screws. So make sure you get that done and obviously seal behind the flue there. Um, so I've just opened it up, had a quick peek inside. Now it is quite different compared to the EcoFit Pure or some of the other glowworms that I've installed recently. So as you can see inside here, the heat exchanger is more familiar to maybe an old Ecotech so, or a uh, Idle Vogue, so I quite like that. I much prefer the face, uh, or the front facing burners, heat exchanger, it makes it a lot easier for servicing. Uh, the only thing I'm not overly sure about is the pump, it's side mounted there, but I'm assuming you can access it for servicing or replacement if you needed. PRV's on the front, um, expansion vessels accessible so yeah actually looks really good and quite nice and compact in there PCBs all nicely housed just clicks on the front like that so anyway moving on to the underside of the boiler I've now got to get all the controls on now the um, brass valves all come with the boiler but there's no copper towels and no filling loop so whenever you're buying a say a budget base or a, a low-end boiler that is normally quite standard you have to like pipe it up um, totally but it's not too bad is it it's not uh don't want things too easy for us so anyway i'll get the valves on and show you how it looks right as you can see i'm just getting the uh, brass isolation valves on the bottom of the boiler and getting it piped up so one thing i would say is the cold water main is on the far right not the central heat in return now I must admit I do find that quite annoying. If I was replacing the combi boiler in a tight space, that would just be a pain. I'd have to cross pipes over. So it's not in its standard formation. You've got uh, flow, hot water, gas, then you've got the central heat in return and the cold. So these two are swapped around. Now I did double check that just to make sure that was right, but it does say on the back there, which is quite handy because uh, I nearly did pipe it up wrong. So um, yeah, we're just getting the pipes in now. So what I'm doing is I'm just bending them through to there while Bailey's picking that up in the airing cupboard side. So that's the gas, flow and return, and then the hot and cold. We've actually got them here on the floor. So we're just gonna join on there and then Bailey will cut the other side. So yeah, we are making good progress. I'm just gonna get these soldered up. So just moving back into where the airing cupboard is, Bailey has finished off sorting out all the pipe work, alterations and decommissioning all the components. So you can see here, what he's done is made it very neat, very tidy, clipped back to the wall. So this cupboard can now be used for storage. 
we can't quite get to these pipes over here because they're underneath this wall it's a little bit awkward so in an ideal world they'll go as well but what we've got here is the foam return and the gas and down here is the hot and cold so those are just capped and you can see down here is where he's made his alterations to the existing system so that's the new flow and return going into the boiler and the gas is now updated to 22 mil everything's pretty much removed other than some pipes here which we will get rid of tomorrow um so moving back where the boiler is cover it up okay moving back into the boiler room so we are now all piped up and we've just turned the cold water main on so we haven't actually got time today to get it wired and fired but we have got it all piped up today so we actually ran the hot and cold into the floor and just picked it up here as uh, they were already running along there nicely so the only thing was it was imperial so it was a bit of a pig but yeah, not too bad for a day's work. It's all piped up, all ready to go. Everything's decommissioned. So tomorrow we just got the fun job of getting it all flushed out, getting it wired in and uh, doing the commissioning process. So yeah, good day's work. Okay, so it's day two now and we're back to finish off the combi boiler installation. So yesterday I was getting a little bit hot and buffered and when I was editing it yesterday, I could tell I was getting a little bit stressed out. So um, sorry about the poor quality of the image. We've moved over to an action cam. So I've tweaked it last night. Hopefully it'll be a little bit better. But anyway, so I've got to still put the filter and the scale reducer on so I stupidly cut this T in for the filling loop here which is where the scale reducer was supposed to go so I need to just get that removed and then get all the other components in. Once we've done that we can get it wired and flushed through and then uh, just disassemble the tanks up in the loft. Okay so we've just moved outside now and we're just updating that condensed pipe that's coming through an overflow. So it was actually 40 mil this waste pipe here and we've just reduced it to 32 mil. I'm going to put insulation all along this as well and Bailey just drilled the hole for the PRV. So yeah it's all good out here for now. Okay, so while I've been insulating that condensed pipe, Bailey has wired in the hive active heating thermostat and the boiler. So because there used to be a hot water cylinder in here originally, this is a twin channel hive, but what Bailey's done is he's only wired in the central heating side of the system and the hot water side will just be like dormant. It won't be in use. So that means we can reuse the thermostat and not have to spend any more on any control. So he's wired in the boiler as well down here. So we've got our cable entry points here and he says it's nice and accessible really. It just, um, you can leave it in location clipped up while you're working on it so the components that i managed to get in here we've got the filling loop on the right so that's quite accessible for the customer i was going to tuck it up underneath but it looked a bit of a mess i've got the scale reducer down there on the cold water main and i haven't put the magna clean on yet i've just put the isolation valves on now we're just about to use the magna cleanser to flush the <coughs> the system through um but i've left like the wing section at home so we just jubilee clipped it at the moment so we're going to get this all filled up chuck the chemicals into this magna cleanse unit here and uh flush the system out make sure it's nice and clean before we leave the job fully commissioned all up and running so this is what it looks like underneath now so with this boiler you get this like flexible condensed connection now this seems to be becoming sort of common practice now with a lot of new boilers that are coming out they're giving you a flexible tube now i don't mind that it makes it a lot easier but it just doesn't look as good um and as you can see we've just upgraded the condensed pipe to 32 mil so yeah let's get this all filled up and flushed out okay so i've just filled the central heating up with pressure now annoyingly like a lot of modern boilers there's no manual gauge so there's no actual gauge you can see underneath the boiler or internally it is all digital now again i just find that really frustrating but i guess it's another cost that's cut but once the power is onto the boiler it is quite easy just to get it up on the display so I've just cycled through the menu button here and if you can see that you're going from central heating, hot water and then gauge so at least it's a lot more simple than some other boilers that I've worked on recently so we've just got 1.2 bar on it at the moment the Jubilee clips are holding tight which is great so 
yeah we'll get the heating up and running now let the chemical do its job and then for any of you who aren't too familiar with these magna cleanse flushing units you need to kind of like vibrate the radiators as the chemicals circulating round to free any sludge and debris as that goes around the system it just picks up in these dual magnets here before it enters the boiler and then once you're kind of all running clear on these hoses you know that your system is running nice and clean and you can flush it all through with clean water and then add your inhibitor so yeah display is quite nice though to be fair quite simple I like it it's not too fancy it's not too over the top it's exactly what you need Okay, so we just finished flushing the system and as you can see on the magnets, there's hardly any iron oxide on these magnets, which is great, only very small rings. So normally if you've got a sludged up system, these magnets can get totally full up. So um, credit to the last boiler engineers who fitted the previous boiler, they must have flushed the system then, so it looks in really good health. So these Addy Magna Cleansers are worth every bit of money. They are absolutely brilliant. I've had this one now since they very first released and still going strong, so yeah, highly recommended. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this install. We have flushed out the system, carried out all the commissioning checks, filled in the benchmark, checked all the hot water temperature, balanced the radiators, and just made sure everything is running as it should. Now, in conclusion, I would say this Glowworm 28C compact boiler is really good value for money for its price point it's actually a lot better than the price may suggest so there's a couple of things that i'm not a particular fan of the return and the cold are the opposite way around to a traditional combi pipework setup which can be quite infuriating but like i said on this install it wasn't such an issue because we was piping up pretty much from new anyway and also the condense and the prv are pretty much on top of each other and that is a little bit fiddly but um, overall I feel like it's really good value for money the flow rate seems to be really good we're getting like 12.5 litres per minute out of it so that's above what it states it should be this currently at the moment at um, the time I purchased it which is July 23 or coming into July 23 it's actually June <laughs> it's a uh, five years warranty so yeah it's not the uh, market leading but for the price again it's still really good so thank you very much for watching this video hopefully catch you on the next one